Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Banson. I'm an application specialist at Civil Survey Solutions. In this uh, video series, I'm going to be running through uh, a real road design uh, using civil site design. In this project, I have uh, already created a number of alignments and I also have uh, a natural surface. So I have a, a civil site design alignment uh, running up the centre line of the road um, and I also have another alignment up, up the top end uh, which I'm going to use to um, uh, control the table drain. Uh, in fact, in regards to the table drain, I'm going to take uh, two separate approaches. On the, the left hand side, I'm going to take uh, more of a, um, a string based approach, and on the right hand side, um, I'm going to create a conditional table drain. <clears throat> so uh, if we're in cut, the table drain gets added. Uh, if we're in fill, then we'll just batter back down to the surface. Um, this video series will also um, show you how to apply super elevation um, using uh, Ostroads uh, guidelines. Um, I'll show you how to um, do site distance checking to Ostroads standards as well. Um, we'll plot some cross sections out um, and some long sections as well. So uh, in this first part um, I wanted to kick off by creating the, the typical cross-section template. So um, to do that I'm going to open up the cross-section uh, template editor. I'm going to create a, a new template for use in this project. So I'm going to select on template options and create new template in local library. And I'm going to call, oh, I'm call this one rural. Okay, so I have a completely blank template. Uh, to start off with, we're going to add the uh, edge bitumen, and I'm going to select on create section to do that. So we're going to have one code out to the left um, uh, named LEB, and another code uh, on the right named REB. And because I have uh, select side to apply set to both, um, the software will create those for me. The standard width will be 3 metres out and my uh, default slope will be minus 3%. I'm going to set some layers of sub-base, so uh, we'll have 0 0.03 of asphalt, 100mm of crushed rock class 2 and 200mm of crushed rock class 3. Uh, just so you know, you can add your own materials um, to the software if you want and I'll show you how to do that uh, in a sec. If I tick on plot code, then uh, these codes will be outputted on my cross sections um, in the bands, um, and also where the uh, the cross section preview um, windows are displayed, these codes will be annotated. So uh, this is important code, so I'm going to tick on plot code. Okay, so the section has been added um, for the edge of bitumen. I'm now going to use create section again and add the shoulder. Uh, it'll come out one meter at minus five percent and I'm just going to apply the same uh, sub-base configuration to the shoulder. And once again click OK. So uh, as I mentioned I'm going to take two different approaches to the table drain. Um, on the left hand side I'm going to use a string to control um, the offset and level of the table drain. So I'm going to add a couple of codes in uh, directly into the grid editor here to form the table drain shape. So LTD1 and half a meter out nice and flat I will have LTD2. So those codes are created and as I said on the right hand side I'm going to create a conditional uh, table drain. Uh, now before I continue, what I want to do in regards to the sub-base at the shoulder section, I want to tell the software that the sub-base will extend out to uh, match uh, back into the table drain design. So um, to do that, I click on edit section and uh, pick a section. The section is between codes, so I pick anywhere between there. And using assigned layer controls, uh, I can do a number of different things with the sub-base. 
I can do things like match the sub base down to a surface and I can do that um, at a minimum thickness that's great for for resheeting uh, but what I want to do is tell the software to extend the sub base out beyond its section and match into the design and I'm going to do that for the first three layers so in cut and fill situations we will extend the sub base out you can uh, uh, extend towards the inside as well and you can set a slope for that extension but I'm going to keep it at the current um, cross fall so by clicking apply and exit um, if I want that edit to apply on to the right hand side as well I just tick on apply subgrade edits to both sides and then click on apply and exit so now you can see that sub base extending through the last thing I'm going to going to do is apply the batters so by clicking on left side I can set slope batters for cut and fill situations um, I could use the fixed width option as well and I'm going to apply a batter uh, for the right side so this is just a very standard um, batter that's been added uh, just so you know you can do more complex things if you're in a large area of cut um, using the intelligence sections command you can have the software automate um, different benching shapes uh, based on depth uh, I won't get to that in this tutorial but um, you know, it might be worth uh, me doing a video series on, on highway design in the future so uh, our template is created uh, what I'm going to do now is click OK and run the create edit road command and select on that center line alignment so the template I want to apply is rural um, uh, as I said we already have a surface in this project called NS that I'm going to go into sample against and I'm going to uh, keep the section sampling at, uh, at 10 meters here uh, generally I set the standards uh, section sampling to um, roughly what I would uh, what interval I would output my cross sections and long sections to uh, if I was to put a really low number in here like one um, yeah I'll, I'll get a more accurate model and volumes but it's harder to filter those um, extra sections out later so um, I'll keep it at 10 and click on OK so the road, uh, the real road has been created um, and the vertical grading editor has opened up. So the software will do a design of best fit over the natural surface um, here. As I move my mouse, I'll just zoom up into plan, but as I zoom, uh, as I uh, move my mouse in the vertical grading editor, um, you can see that green chucker in plan appearing. Now for real road design, um, one thing that I find very useful is this bar up the top here. You can see uh, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, another blue section. Uh, those blue areas are your horizontal curves. So as you're working on the rural design, you can see um, uh, straight away if the vertical curve you're designing is through a horizontal curve. Uh, so that information is useful. Uh, the other thing I point out with the vertical grading editor if you click on the display uh, parameters uh, form you'll see that there are a few design aids that you can set um, so for while designing the rural road I can set a crest K value a sag K value and some maximum and minimum grade warnings so um, as I'm designing and I move over in IP you can see these text boxes updating here um, so if an area is red um, it, it's telling me that it's outside those design aids that I set so um, you know this area here at 0.445 I'm too, um, uh, too flat and perhaps I want to increase the grade there I'm not going to go in too much detail on designing the vertical as, as yet um, because I want to highlight a few issues with the design at the moment um, but just to quickly run through a few things um, uh, if I want to edit an IP that's 
already been created. I can select on the edit IP command, pick on that IP, and from this form I can make some changes. So uh, I can override the level, I can override the VC length. Just so you know, you, you, you can set the VC length by specifying a K value. Uh, in fact, when I do change the vertical curve length, you'll see the actual K um, update. Uh, when I change values in here, I can instantly see what the in grade will be, what the out grade will be. The software will tell me the maximum vertical curve length that I could fit at this uh, particular location. Uh, and you can also set the IP rather than typing in a level, I can uh, set the IP by specifying an in grade and out grade, or an in grade and an out grade, and the software will shift the change. So uh, that's edit IP. When you run insert IP uh, and select a, a, a point, um, the same dialog box will, will load up. Now, another uh, method for editing uh, IPs quickly um, is this grid view. And this will just load up with a table listing all of the IPs, the levels, the uh, elevation change, the grade back, the grade forward, and the vertical curve length. So this is a nice interface to, to come into and, and quickly override the vertical curve length. Um, I can select multiple IPs in here and um, use this override option. So if I wanted to override a number of um, IOPs uh, with a particular vertical curve length and you can also use this interface to shift changes as well so maybe I, I made a, a change to the horizontal geometry and then uh, as, a as a result of that I wanted to shift the, uh, the IOPs back or across or selected IOPs back or, or forward so uh, I can uh, use the, the shift changes to achieve that as well to open up some cross sections, I can right click the mouse and open up the um, right click cross section which will just update as I right click the mouse. Um, but by holding down shift and right click, I can open up uh, as many of these cross sections as I like. And uh, the great thing about ARD is that as we're working on the design, so if I shift an IP up and down, and see those cross-section windows um, updating. So I'll leave it there for the for the first part of uh, this video series, and uh, in the next one I'll I'll run through the design of the table drains.